let's talk about the Kansas City Chiefs, the reigning back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion Chiefs at that. Can't forget to mention that. And their very interesting offseason so far. Obviously, LeJarrius Sneed is the talk of the offseason for the Chiefs. Let's get into some articles talking about the interest in not only by the Chiefs, but some other teams in LeJarrius Sneed. And then we'll talk more about it on the other side. This first part is from A to Z Sports. It says the new league year is quickly approaching and the teams will begin their attempts at improving their roster. A recent report by Tyler Dragon of USA Today shared that seven teams have reached out to Kansas City Chiefs to express interest in trading for cornerback LeJarrius Sneed. While most of the players tagged this offseason seem poised to return to their said teams, Sneed and the Chiefs seem to be on a trajectory for a trade and a team source has confirmed to me that the Colts are interested. But not only were the Colts interested, Nick, as we uh, mentioned, there are seven teams interested. This tweet from NFL Rumors says the Kansas City Chiefs have seven teams contact them about LeJarrius Sneed. They are the Vikings, the Colts, of course, Titans, Patriots, Lions, Falcons, and Jaguars. I think that's quite an interest in LeJarrius Sneed. Curious what your thoughts and what all this means for the Chiefs. But Chiefs fans, before we get to Nick, in the comments section below, let us know, out of all of these teams on the board for the Chiefs, what are some trade options do you think that the Chiefs might go after for LeJarrius Sneed? Let us know in the comment section below. But Nick, what do you think this all means for the Chiefs? So I think first and foremost, I think it's pretty much a guarantee at this point, in my opinion, that LeJarrius Sneed will be traded away from the Kansas City Chiefs, most likely to the Indianapolis Colts. But let's break down what this means for the Chiefs and what the Chiefs could potentially get in return. Obviously, LeJarrius, LeJarrius Sneed excuse me, is on the non-exclusive franchise tag which really works out kind of two directions that he could go. One is Snead negotiates on his own without Kansas City being involved whatsoever with another team. He agrees to a new deal with another team, and Snead goes to that new team. But because the Chiefs weren't involved at all, that new team would owe the Chiefs two first-round draft picks, right? That's a lot. The odds of that happening are, are pretty much zero. The realistic path is that the Chiefs are involved in the negotiation. Snead finds a team he likes. This team wants to get luxurious Snead, and they call the Chiefs, and they work out a deal. They work out a settlement saying, all right, you take him off the tag and trade him to us, or we do a sign-and-trade kind of thing, however it works out between the two teams, and we'll give you something in return for luxurious Snead. That's a direction we're going here right there. So I think it's first and foremost to understand that this interest won't have anything to do with two first round picks. That's just not going to happen. But I think there is a very strong chance the Chiefs will get a lot for Legereus Need. I'm thinking at this point, when you look at see the seven teams involved, I could see a team like the Colts jump in and maybe they try and low ball. Maybe they jump in and say, hey, a third and a seventh. And that's a little low for Legereus Need. But with all these other seven teams involved in the mix right now, you get maybe uh, the Detroit Lions jump in and say, how about just throw in there and say, how about a, a third and a fifth? And then the Chiefs go back to an, another team. Maybe they go to the Patriots. And the Patriots are like, I'll do a third and a fifth, but it's a higher up third and fifth, right? And you just go back and forth. You get all these teams negotiating against each other, teams that are looking to get luxurious need. And that puts the Chiefs in a powerful position to basically bid up the entire price to get something in return of value for, for Sneed. And my personal opinion is if you can flip Sneed for two thirds or a second and a fourth, second and a fifth, something like that, I think that's a win because the Chiefs are so just darn good at drafting in those middle rounds. And we talk about all the time, the middle rounds of the draft, the day two section of the draft over the past few years has become much more depth in terms of talent based on how the college rules have changed over the past few years. That's where you really want to have a lot of draft assets is in the second and third round, as opposed to like the fifth, sixth, seventh, as it was kind of in the older days, you know, three sevenths was worth one third. It's not the case anymore at all. You'd much rather have that third. And I think the Chiefs, if they can get a couple of those mid-round, those day two draft picks for Snead, I think they do that in a heartbeat. Because imagine if you get two-thirds for Snead. You're going to probably get two players, knowing how the Chiefs draft. One of them will probably be a hit on Snead's level. You'll have another player that'll probably be somewhat decent, probably not as good, but still a contributor. Plus, you'll free up $20 million in cap space, right? That's the direction the Chiefs and Brett Veach are going in right now. I think it's going to head that way, and I won't be surprised if before long we get some more finalized information about the Chiefs pulling off this trade. Yeah, Nick, and I think, like you said, the Chiefs, like you, they've been gold in drafting some really low down the board uh, DBs and corners. And I think, like you said, if they can score two picks from Snead, that'll give them really, really great opportunity to hit on another cornerback. Because in 2022 alone, they had some great success drafting cornerbacks low down the board. You had Jalen Watson from 2022, a seventh round pick who came out this season with a 68.5 PFF grade, pretty respectable in his own right. Then as well, they had Joshua Williams, a 2022 fourth round pick, 
who came out with a 74.4 PFF grade at the corner position. Two guys from the same draft class showing the Chiefs they know what they're looking for. And this is across the board. You go through it numerous times. Isaiah Pacheco, late round draft picks for the Chiefs have been a gold mine. So if you get mid round picks with a guy like Legarius Sneed, I think they're really looking to be able to potentially replace his production with a couple of guys that they select there. Maybe it spreads out across a couple of different positions and not just one corner they get. But I think they're set up to A, not have to, you know, leverage a ton of money into a guy like Legarius Sneed. Because obviously, as Patrick Mahomes' contract progresses, as other contracts on this team progresses, that's going to be really difficult to do. But B, they're going to get two solid players that most likely are going to contribute to this team and I think help them continue this run try to go back to back to back Super Bowl. So I think this is a really smart move by the Chiefs and they positioned themselves for a really successful draft. And I think it's one of the things to hit on in terms of the positioning because right now, and look, Legereus Need is a good player, really good player, not taking anything away from him. But we see this all the time when teams have good, not great, but good players and they go to the Super Bowl, they make those deep playoff runs. Their value just gets so out of whack because people see them play on the Super Bowl. They people see them play in conference championship games and they think they're superstars because they're playing well in those moments. And Legereus Sneed is a good player, but the reality is he's not the best corner in football. I don't even think he's top two or three, right? You can make an argument, maybe top five. I don't think so. I think he's in more in that six to 10 range, but you know, arguments can be made. But the reality is you'll probably find someone willing to trade assets as if he is a top two or three because they've got a warped sense of value because they see Sneed because he plays on the Chiefs playing in those big games. You really need to take advantage of those opportunities if you're making deep playoff runs. Other teams will perceive your good players to be great. You trade those good players for great assets and you just reload and rebuild. That's what smart teams do. That's what the Patriots did for a number of years. The Chiefs are taking that to a whole nother level. I think it's yet another sign that the Chiefs, no matter how many players they lose, no matter how young they get at certain spots, as long as they have Mahomes, as long as they have Andy Reid, and just as importantly, in my opinion, as long as they have Brett Veach, they're going to be a Super Bowl contender.